أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا فعلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه وأدخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين آمين Today inshallah I'll try to finalize studying the beautiful name of Allah the Creator because there is a very important things we have to talk about when we mention this beautiful name. So first of all, we'll talk about the verse in Al-Quran Al-Kareem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal arda an tazula. وَلَئِنْ زَالَتَا إِنْ أَمْسَكَهُمَا مِنْ أَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ صدق الله العظيم Imagine a train is being driven at 100 km speed per hour and then suddenly it comes out from track what kind of force you need to apply to put the train back into the track. It's a train. Imagine the force needed, it is related to the speed and the mass, the weight. So imagine now, if the earth is moving in a certain orbit, and it comes out from its orbit. What force we need to apply to restrain and put the earth back on its orbit? Maybe somebody will not imagine. They think it is maybe very little or not mentioned, but keep in mind the speed of earth the average speed of Earth around the sun is 25 kilometer per second. You multiply by 60, you'll get it by hour. It's a big, a huge speed for such a big mass. Huh? 3,600 kilometer per hour. times 25. So yeah, 3,600 times 25, this is the speed of Earth per hour around the sun. Now, for us to understand what I am talking about, okay? Here I will explain to you two cases. Now, we all know that the Earth is moving in an elliptic shape around the sun which means elliptic shape means there is a big diameter and there is a small diameter one long and one short right so first of all why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this orbit make it elliptic not circle right and the second one the earth is not moving with a straight axis. It is tilted. The axis of earth is tilted 23 and half degree. Exact. Not 22. It is always 23 and half degrees from the vertical line. So it is tilted this way. And it moves around itself and it goes around the sun. So there is a three things 
Allah put in earth, only on earth, not other orbits, not other planets. It's only earth. It has this special phenomena, which Allah built it in this earth. Why? Number one. So for sure we know the earth moving around itself. This will create day and night, right? So day and night. Imagine if the earth is not moving, then you will have day all year around and the other half will be night all year around. Right? And then it is moving around the sun. So it will create the four seasons. Right? The four seasons. And why we need the four seasons? Because life need the four seasons. You cannot make farming or planting anything if there is no summer, winter, and spring and fall. So the farming needs this four season. And it is tilted in that way so that all earth will have the four season. It is not always on certain places and the other places doesn't have it. So always the four seasons are moving all around the earth. So all earth parts will have the four seasons. Now, the other thing, imagine what will happen for the water, which is the very basic thing for our life, if the earth is not moving. So either if the water faces the sun, it will evaporate and it will be too hot. You cannot live there. And the other side will be very cold and the water will be frozen. You cannot live there. So this is a very essential thing. Now about the movement of earth. Now this is a very important thing to understand. Now we understand that it is elliptic orbit, right? Elliptic means there is a short distance and there is a long distance. The earth has to move. Now, if let's say in the short distance, the earth is closer to the sun and the speed of earth is 25 kilometer per second. Now, when it comes to the short distance, okay, now, because the distance becomes short, the gravity will be stronger. The gravity between sun and earth will be stronger. So the sun now will try to attract and pull the earth towards the sun. So now what will happen? The earth start increasing the speed so that it will escape from the extra gravity force generated by the short distance. So the speed of earth now becomes more than 25 kilometer per second so that it will escape from the gravity of the sun. But it will not escape at all. It has to escape with a certain limit. So it is calculated. So the escape force is limited so that it will keep on the same on the same orbit. Now when this, the earth will start going to the far distance, this, the earth will start reducing its speed so that it will stay on the same orbit. So when it comes to the short, it increase the speed to overcome the gravity, the extra gravity from the sun. When it goes to the longer diameter, it will reduce the speed so that it will stay on the same orbit. It will not go away far from the sun or it will not attract or come closer to the sun. So how this happened? There is no computer controlling the speed of earth. The, the earth has no mind or brain to think 
oh yeah, now I have to increase my speed. Now I have to decrease my speed. This is what Allah control it. It is in the hands of Allah. Allah said, Inna Allah yumsiku samawati wal arda an tazula. Allah is catching this. Allah is the one who is controlling this. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will release it, life will end since so long time. So now, the scientist for you to understand the gravity power. The scientists, they said, if, for example, the earth get away from the sun gravity, how much power we need? So this, they calculate the gravity and they found that they need one milliard, means one billion of steel cables. One billion steel cables. Every cable diameter is five kilometers to be attached between the sun and earth to keep the sun in the same position. And the distance between each cable and the other one is five meters. Imagine if these cables are there, how can we live on earth? There is no way to transport. There is no way you build houses. There is no way you can find a place to farm. It's all just steel cables everywhere and you are trying to escape in between. This is crazy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, رَفَعَ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا There is no pillars seems to your eyes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it enable without you look to it so this is the creation of Allah هذا خلق الله فأروني ماذا خلق الذين من دونه this is the creation of Allah show me what the others have created so this is a very important thing we have to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created things, he created perfect. There is no recall. There is no defect. So the man he created at the first beginning, Adam alayhi salam, is similar to the man he is creating now. It is the same creation. Everything same. Yes, maybe longer, taller, whatever, but the creation is same. The specifications are all same. That's why it is all perfect. You can just think about how much Allah created. When you ask someone, for example, the best art in this world, you call him and ask him, Draw for me faces. How many faces can he draw? How many? Maybe 50, 100. But at the end, he will start repeating. He will start repeating the faces. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since Adam, till the day of judgment, barely you will find two people similar to each other. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Badi'u samawati wal ard. You know what that means, Badi'u samawati wal ard. He is the most innovator. Innovator, always having a different thing. When you go to the, to the sea, for example, look to the, to, the, to the fish and all animals in sea. They are different shapes, different colors, different way how they live. The, the fishes which is in the bottom, different than the one on the upper level. Look to the plants around you. Different smell, different looking, different leaves. It's all different. Innovation. Every time you will see something different. And from the day one, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the oceans and sea, everyone loves the look of the sea. Everyone loves the green. You will never find that some people will come, oh, I don't like the green. 
I don't like the ocean. I don't like the mountain. Wallahi, when you look to these scenes, mountains, even snow, rain, fall, all, they look very beautiful in different shapes, in different looks. Wherever you go, you will find amazing pictures. You will never fed up from looking to the creation of Allah because Allah is the most innovator. Always he bring you the most beautiful thing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I told you, we always hear these three names together. Huwa Allah, Al-Khaliq, Al-Bari'u, Al-Musawwir. Three names, they are all related to the creation. So what is the difference between them? So Al-Khaliq, the creator, he is the one who create everything from nothing without example. Keep this in mind. Create everything from nothing. So he created Adam, Adam alayhi salam from, from dust. There is no example. There is nothing to copy without any period or a previous example. And then al bari al bari he is the one who created these things from a suitable material to suit their mission in life. For example, the human created from dust and it is from dust and water. Why? Because the mission of the human being on this life is to construct and to lead and to represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Allah created the angels from light because their mission is to transfer the message from Allah to the human, to human being. Is their mission to worship Allah. One of their mission is to protect the human being. With every human being, there is 10 angels Allah sent to protect him. 10 angels for everyone. So the angels, they surround the people in such a place like this. They make dua for the believers and they have many missions. That's why Allah created them from light, which is pure. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create the jinn from fire. And the fire has, has the evil, the evil spirit. And this is their mission. This is what they are doing. So, al bari means he created everything from a certain material which suit its mission in life. And then al musawwir the one who give you the last picture, the look. For example, imagine if the human being without skin, how he will look? He will look very ugly. And you cannot distinguish between this fellow and this fellow because the skin is the one who make you different. He's the one who make you different. Without the skin, everyone looks same like the other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He give you this smooth skin so that you will be different from others. Now, here there is something very important I would like to talk about. One hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated in Sahih Muslim. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala خلق الخلق على صورته means Allah created human being similar to him. Now, some people they think the meaning of it that we looks like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is completely wrong. Why? Because we have to remember ليس كمثله شيء nothing is similar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the scholars, they said, in explaining this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has some aspects, some specifications, and 
He gave the human being a similar specifications like him. Like what? I will explain it so that you will not be confused. So when you hear the hadith, Allah khalaq al khalq ala surate means Allah created a human being similar to him. You have to understand what similarity he mean by. So first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he make you standing, right? Not like the animals walking into four legs. So we are walking on two legs. Why? Because your mission on earth needs you to be standing. While the animals mission need them to be on four. So the mission of human being to build, to plant, to farm, to teach, to make industry, to improve, to be the leaders and to be representative for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you are standing on two legs. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you unique like him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is unique, nothing similar to him. And he give you this unique also as well. How? Your fingerprints is unique. You will never find two person with the same fingerprints. Your skin smell is unique. You will never find two people with the same smell. And that's why the policemen, they use the police dogs to catch those criminals by their smell. And then Allah give you your eyes, which is unique. So now they are using the eyes for security purpose. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you a very unique DNA, RNA. This is in your blood. Allah give you a unique sperm code. So that's why when a woman is divorced, she has idda, a time that nobody is allowed to marry her until she finished the idda. So why this time is given to her? Because they discover that the sperm from a man, it has a code. It has a code. And the woman body receive this code every time they have mate. So when this code is cut off, her body will start forgetting the code and it takes, it takes the period of idda until the code disappear completely from the woman body. That is the wisdom behind the idda because interfering codes, interfering the codes in a woman body will create disease and that's why AIDS and other kind of disease, similar, similar disease will raise and will be gone. So after the divorce, there is a idda and this idda or this period where the woman is not allowed to marry anyone until the time is over, which is basically because of this code. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique and he gave us this kind of unique things to make us distinguished, to make us private, to make us special like him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whenever here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human being similar to him, this is the meaning. They are similar to him in some matters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you your brain. So the way of your thinking is completely different than the other fellow thinking. On this earth, we have six billion people. You will have six billion different way of thinking. So you will never find two people having the same way of thinking. So this is the unique which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to human being. And then what I would like to talk about 
is the creation of Adam, which is very important. And this is us. We have to understand how we are created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, <clears throat> He talked to the angels and He said, Inni khaliqun basharan min teen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will create in I will create a human being made from mud and the mud is combined between dust and water this is our origin and then in another verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna khalaqnahu min teen lazib i created you from a sticky mud so when he mixed the dust which is collected from all over the earth with water and then he left it for a while, it becomes sticky, sticky mud. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he make it to be dry and then it become what is called a salsal, clay. You know when those, when those uh, professional, they make the clay in a different shape so that you will have at the end kind of, you know, tools like vase or pots, all made of clay. That is how we are being created from similar clay. Now, what is the final touch? So clay was the last material. And then when it becomes hard, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, when I finish this creation, and then I blow a soul from mine into him, then all of you, make sujood for him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He honored us by, first He created human being by His hand. And He said to Iblis, قَالَ يَا إِبْلِيسُ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْ Allah said, talking to Iblis, O oh Iblis, why you did not prostrate to the one I created in my hands? So, the honor which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave a human being, that he created a human being, Adam alayhi salam, with his blessed hands. So he never told that he created anything in his hands except a human being. So we are created by the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not by the word, which means when he created something in his hand, it's going to be different. It's going to be very special. He will love what he created with his hand. Imagine yourself when you build a house in your hand, not just by it. When you build it stone by stone, brick by brick, you put every piece in your hand. You will love it. You will love it because you build it step by step in your hand. You spend time when you are doing that. But when you buy it, it is different. It is different. That's why Allah loves human being. Allah loves human being. He loves us. And that's why He gave us the soul from His own. Allah honored us by giving us from his own soul to give us life. So we have this life because of him. We have this soul which is part from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine how much you love your son? How much? You love him, right? You love him more than anything else. But his, your son is not part of your soul. He is just an utfa. He is just a drop of sperm 
just a drop, half of it from you, the other half from mom. But what if you give your son part from your soul? How much you will love him? Think about it. How much Allah loves us because he gave every one of us part from his soul. That's why he love us. Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said every day. The hadith is authentic hadith. Every day the ocean will cry and will ask, Oh Allah, let me sink human being. All of them, they eat your rizq, but they worship the other one. And then the, the heaven, they will call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every day. Oh Allah, let us collapse on a human being. They eat your rizq, but they worship someone else. And then the earth, every day asking Allah, Oh Allah, let us swallow human being. They eat your rizq, but they worship someone else. Then Allah replied to them, stay away from the human being. If you created them, you will love them. If you created them, you will love them. Can you feel how much he loves you? Can you feel? Can you feel? We, we have to feel this. Every day morning when you wake up, the first thing you should do when you wake up from your sleep, you should do, you say the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to say it, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. Every day when you wake up, remember, when you sleep, your soul is not there. When you sleep, your soul is gone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha, wallati lam tamut fi manamiha, fayumsiku allati qada alayha al-mawt, wa yursilu al-ukhra ila ajalim musamma. Means, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking the souls of those who died. And those who sleep, and if it is written that they will die, Allah will keep their soul with him. And the one who is not written to die, Allah will send him his soul back. So means every day when you sleep, your soul will go back to Allah. That's why when you wake up, you should Thank Allah that He returned back your soul to yourself to make you alive every day. So you cannot stay awake more than 24 hours. It's impossible. You have to sleep. Your soul has to go back to Allah every day, every day. And Allah is the one who control it. He will send it back to you or He will hold it back with Him. I think you hear many stories. A lot of people, they sleep, they never wake up. My father, one of them. Sleep, never wake up. That is reality. That is reality. Our soul is part of Allah. And that's why when you sit and read the Quran, you feel comfort. When you sit and do remembrance of Allah, do zikr, you feel comfort. When you sit in a majlis, in this lecture or a similar one, you feel comfort. Why? Because you remember Allah. Your soul become closer to Allah. Your soul, which is part of from Allah, now become more closer. It feel more comfortable. Imagine the best one you love, your dad, your mom, the best one you love. After they die, just after they die, five minutes after half an hour what will happen you will rush to get rid of the body you will rush your wife oh your your children will be scared what happens he was your beloved dad or beloved mom and then now you scared why 
it is the soul it is the soul ويسألونك عن الروح قل الروح من أمر ربي وما أوتيتم من العلم إلا قليلا it is an order from Allah nobody knows what is the soul is but we know that it is part from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the soul never vanish never yes after your death your body will vanish except those whom Allah choose like prophets like the murders like Ibadullah Salihin but indeed most of people their body will ruin but your soul never never and that's why Allah has a places to keep the soul your soul will still alive forever it is there waiting your body to come up so this is a beautiful meanings we have to understand from the name the creator and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us the creator as I told you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first thing when he decided to create Adam he said <clears throat> Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. You are a successor for Allah. You are representing Allah on earth. So whenever you walk out, whenever you go to your work, whenever you go home, whenever you go in the in the market or in the malls or whenever you go, remember, ask yourself, I am really representing Allah for what I'm doing? Is this what Allah wants me to do? Is this reality? I am really a successor for Allah? This is the question you have to ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send Adam to construct, to build, to plant, to grow, to farm, to make a big community, to make life easy for everyone. And that is our mission in this life. So, the last thing which I want to mention to you, two hadith, Qudusi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in this hadith, O oh son of Adam, I created you in my hands and I raised you with my blessings and you disobey me and don't follow my orders if you come back to me i will accept you from where you will find another god for you and i am the most merciful most most forgiven and the other hadith allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh my servant, I created you from nothing and I gave you your hearing and your seeing, your eyes and your heart and your mind. Oh my servant, I covered you but you don't fear me. Oh my servant, I remember you but you forget about me. Oh my servant, I'm getting shy from you, but you don't get shy from me. Better than me. Who is more generous than me? Who is the one who knocked my door? I did not open it for him. Who is the one who asked me and I never gave him what he asked for? It's really very shameful when we don't remember this beautiful name usually i used to explain the names in two halqa and two lectures but with this name i feel so shy to close it very rush because this is the basic of our living this is the origin why we are here he is the one who create us we should never forget about him we should shy. We should love him the same way he love us. Remember what I said. He love us. He, can you imagine if he just give us a food like the birds? The birds, they eat seeds. Can you imagine if you spend the whole life eating seeds? 
But no, he gave you plenty of food, plenty of fruits, plenty of, of vegetables, plenty of fruits. What, what is this for? Because he loves you. Because he loves us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the message today. The creator loves you. You should love him. The creator give you whatever you ask. You should at least shy from him. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma ajma'na ala ma yurdiq. Waj'alna minal mutahabbina feek. Allahumma aj'al jam'ana hadha jam'an mubarakan marhuma. Wa tafarruqana min ba'dihi ma'asuma. Wa la taj'al minna wa la fina shakiyan wa la mahruma. Allahumma aghfir lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina. Wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ridaka wal janna. Wa na'udhu bika min sakhatika wal nar. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al jannata bila hisab. Wa la sabiq i'adab. Allahumma inna نسألك الجنة بلا حساب ولا سابق عذاب اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة بلا حساب ولا سابق عذاب يا أرحم الراحمين اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتب علينا وارحمنا إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم اللهم إنا نسألك يا عظيم يا كريم يا واهب يا أرحم الراحمين يا من خلقتنا من العدم وأوجدتنا بالنعم يا أرحم الراحمين أن تقولنا في نهاية هذا المجلس قوموا قد غفرت لكم اللهم اجعلنا ممن تصحب يصحبون حبيبك محمد في أعلى جنات الخلد يا رب العالمين اللهم آتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد اللهم أصلح لنا في ذرياتنا اللهم أصلح لنا في ذرياتنا يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا وقلوب أزواجنا وأولادنا على دينك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله وسلم